Merry Christmas Eve everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you subscribe. If this is your first visit, I talk about what is the same and what's different between movies and shows and the books and video games they come from. Sometimes vice versa, all three. If you like that topic, please subscribe and turn on all notifications. It'll be my Christmas present. As promised, on Christmas Eve today, I am covering the novelization of Home Alone. But first, a word about my sponsor, Pancakes Pancakes. High protein, low carb, low fat, gluten free, pancakes and waffles, um num num. Just go to the link in the description and use coupon code books to movies to get 10% off. All right, Home Alone. The most timeless piece of slapstick comedy for Christmas. And since this one is a movie to book, it's kind of a back and forth on the watering up and watering down. You know, for instance, what's watered up in the book is watered down in the movie and vice versa. So with that being said, I will cover this one one facet at a time rather than my usual uh, both, then book, then movie lecture. All right, the opening scene. Harry is surveying the chaos in a rented cop costume. And the answer to the question that recently popped up on social media. What did Peter and Kate do for a living to be able to afford this house and a Paris vacation for nine? The answer. Peter is a business owner of undisclosed nature and Kate is a fashion designer. Hence the readily available mannequins when Kevin was trying to create the image of a full house. And the trip to Paris was a Christmas present from Peter's brother who lives and works there. The book's introduction to Kevin is he is setting up the VCR for Uncle Frank so Uncle Frank can watch Angels with Filthy Souls. And then once he's got the VCR hooked up, he shoes him out of the room. So we are introduced to Kevin in the movie when he interrupts Kate's phone call. And by the way, I did an IMDb search for Angels with Filthy Souls, and there is no such movie. The little bit of it we do see was made just for Home Alone. You like my peasant hat? It's not really called a peasant hat. That's when I first put it on, my husband laughed at me and said, why are you wearing a peasant hat? And he cited this scene from uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Anyway, next we get to the uh, pizza dinner fiasco. A little watered down in the movie since it starts in the book with Uncle Frank pantsing Kevin in front of everyone. And then of course Buzz devours the whole plain pizza and feigns gagging just to piss him off. Leading to the big fight and the big mess and Kevin just being unfairly hung out to dry for the whole thing, capped off with, with the uh, little jerk label. Between the two, book and movie, every insult thrown Kevin's way from all his siblings is the same. So is the old man Marley's story, which brings me to Buzz. He is a bit more in the movie. When he refuses Kevin's request to camp in his room. In the book, it's even if you were growing on my arm. In the movie, it's on his ass. And there is no impromptu nudie magazine day later on when Kevin raids his treasure trove. But uh, the Buzz's bullet pointing of A, 2, and D when listing his reasons for his apathy, that's exactly the same. While Kevin is home alone, the imaginary, demonically possessed furnace is movie only, as is the uh, drain stopping and water pouring wet bandit shenanigans perpetrated by Marv. Alright, the shopping crypts and the utter leaps and bounds into adulting, using angels with filthy souls on the pizza dude as his dry run on using it on the bandits that he knows are casing his home. Meeting and getting to know old man Marley in church and exchanging sage advice with him and asking the local Santa for his family back 
are both a spot-on match between book and movie. In the meantime, Kate's return trajectory are completely different from book to movie. In the movie, the older couple she bribes with her first class seats and jewelry, they brush her off in the book, so she's stuck in Paris for a couple of days. Her first flight back from the standby list is to Boston, not Dallas. And then next up is Detroit, not uh, Scranton. But she still gets to hitch a ride with the polka band. And as an interesting piece of movie trivia, John Candy ad-libbed his entire pitch in this scene. There was no script. <sighs> and now for the slapstick, the traps in the house. We all laughed until our abs were sore and our eyes were leaking. We wondered how they could keep going with punctured feet, second and third degree burns, concussions, and a rip roaring spider freak out. It's all perfectly timed and detailed in the movie. We could feel that nail and those broken ornaments. And it is inarguably the most looked forward to part of the movie. But the book seems to go to ludicrous speed through this part. It details each trap, the only different one being the heated doorknob. In the book, Kevin holds the same blowtorch to the doorknob that he strapped to the other door. They just go from one trap to the next, they sustain their injuries, and proceed while in a lot of pain. Another difference in this part between book and movie is the climactic tarantula scene. In the book, the tarantula, whose name is Axel, after the GNR frontman, just happens to be nearby and skitters across both laid out bandits, causing them both to flinch and squirm and give Kevin an escape window to escape through the window. This part in the movie is downright unforgettable as a last second improv because the tarantula happened to be there. So, using this Lego spider my son for ma made for me, they take up so many notches in the movie that it just can't be imitated anywhere. The book and movie reconnect after that when the bandits have Kevin trapped briefly until Marley cracks him with his shovel. Then we get to the happy ending when Kate and the rest of the family finally make it home for Christmas. And just as Kevin sees that the Marley family has come back together, the movie alone throws in a cliffhanger. Since Kevin did not clean up the carnage he left in Buzz's room. And that is all for Home Alone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please leave a comment and a like. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever your bag is. And I'll see you back next week when we pick back up with Season 4 of Dexter.